Welcome back to Math 130. Let's move on to section 11.4, addition and subtraction of radicals. When we're considering addition and subtraction, I would like to remind you about how addition and subtraction works with variables. So for instance, if I were to write negative 7s plus 5s minus 6s, you could ev evaluate that, right? Because each of those terms, separated by an addition sign or a sub subtraction sign, has the same variable, we can add them all up. Negative 7s plus 5s minus 6s equals negative 8s. And that could be in yellow too. Okay? We're going to work with radicals in much the same way. So let's do our first example of a radical expression where we're going to be adding and subtracting. So negative 7 square root of 3 plus 5 square root of 3 minus 6 square root of 3 will turn out to be negative 8 square root of 3. Okay, just like it was when instead of square root of 3, we had s. All right, let's go on to example 2. Okay, if you have 2 times the cubed root of 5, and then you add to that not the cubed root of 5, five but the square root of 5, and then let's say you subtract a cubed root of 5, what would that equal? Well, you have to be very careful. The radicals must be exactly the same if you're going to add them. So the only two that we can add are these two. Therefore, we have 2 cubed root of 5 minus, okay, remember please, that there is, let's see, and understood 1 right here in front of this cubed root of 5. Therefore, 2 cubed root of 5 minus 1 cubed root of 5 leaves only 1 cubed root of 5. We don't need to write the 5 out there. And we also still have this plus square root of 5 added. As another example, example number 3. don't think I need to write example each time. Uh, 3 square root of 6. Okay, notice I'm using yellow to indicate different things in each problem. So we have 3 square root of 6 minus 2 square root of 6 plus 5. Let's go to a square root of 2. And let's say we're going to add to that 3 square root of 2. In this case, the like terms are right beside each other. So 3 square root of 6 minus 2 square root of 6, we'll just, uh, we drop our coefficient completely. We just have 1 square root of 6. Once again, we're doing that. But then the 5 square root of 2 plus 3 square root of 2 will give us 8 square root of 2. We cannot combine those in any way because, take a look, in each case, there are additions or subtractions separating the terms and especially in our final answers once we add up all the like terms that we can like these two like terms and these two like terms here we combine those two like terms here we could combine all of the terms there because they were all multiplied by square root of 3 but once you do that, if you have an addition or a subtraction separating unlike terms, you are finished. All right, let's move this out of the way. I'm going to actually stop going back and forth with the different colors and stay with one color unless I want to really emphasize something after I'm done. Okay, so example number four. Now for this one, I'm going to set this up as the square root of 8x over 5y. Okay, well, that's one term. We have a fraction under a radical. 
but then I'm going to subtract from that 10 xy. So that subtraction between the radicals means we have two separate terms. Now, how are we going to deal with this? Well, we have a fraction there. We're going to have to get a common denominator at some point, but let's see if we can make the first term there simpler first. So let's rewrite this for the moment as 8x, square root of 8x, over the square root of 5y. Okay? And then subtract from that our 10xy. Okay? But we have a problem with this square root of 5y. We can't pull any perfect squares out of there, but we also cannot leave it as a radical in the denominator. So it, we could find a common denominator between this term and this term and add them, but it's going to involve a square root of 5y. I don't want to go there. So for now, we're just going to go ahead and figure out what we have to do with this square root of 5y to get some perfect squares underneath that radical. And the answer is, if we multiply it by 5y, it's going to do what we want. But we cannot just multiply the denominator by the square root of 5y. We have to multiply the numerator by that as well. So what we're going to get on top is the square root, because both of those factors are under the square root, 5 times 8xy over the square root of... 5y times 5y, or 5y squared. So the square root of that is just going to be 5y. On top, we have the square root of 40xy. And then we have this minus the square root of 10xy. Okay, so I'm looking at this, and I'm seeing an xy here, an xy here. I'm seeing a 10 here, and I'm seeing something that looks like it's multiplied by 10, that 10 is a factor. And indeed it is, and I'm going to use that fact. I'm going to go ahead and take a look at 40 over here to the side. Probably should have done that in a different color, but here's what I'm thinking. Okay, 40 is equal to, square root of 40 is equal to the square root of 4 times 10. 4 is the biggest perfect square I can pull out of there. So the square root of 4 is 2, and then I have a square root of 10 left if I'm just dealing with 40. But in my actual problem, I have a square root of 40xy. So the 40 breaks into 4 times 10. I can pull out the 2, leave the 10xy. Oh, that looks nice because I'm still subtracting the square root of 10xy. However, I have a fraction here and not a fraction there, or do I? Because you can always express any number as a fraction over 1. Okay, so let me put that fraction back under there. Okay, that denominator back under there. But, okay, I have a fraction minus a fraction. I have to find a common denominator. In fact, my least common denominator here is, well, it's going to have to be 5y. So what I have to ask myself is, what do I have to do with square root of 10xy over 1 to give it a denominator of 5y? And the answer is, I need to multiply it by 5y in the numerator and the denominator. And that will give me 5y. Need a little more room square root of 10xy over 5y. Okay, so that's just what I'm doing out to the side. Scratch work. Okay, it's really not in my head. On the pencil, on the pad, rather. Okay, so this makes this whole thing equal to this 2 square root of 10xy over 5y. And I'm subtracting from that my equivalent fraction that I got over here. So 5y square root of 10xy over 5y. This will become then 
to square root of 10 xy minus 5 y square root of 10 xy all over the same denominator 5y okay but this still looks kind of complicated if you look closely though you have a common factor which can be removed that common factor is the square root of 10 xy and if you remove that from the first term you're left with 2 and if you remove it from the second term I'm speaking about in the numerator, you have 2 minus 5y. It is still all over 5y. Now the common convention is that you write the radical last. So this is going to be equal to 2 minus 5y. That entire thing is multiplied by the square root of 10 xy. If you do not Put parentheses around this. Okay, it's going to be like you're saying 2 minus only the 5y times square root of 10x. And that is not what we want. We want 2 minus 5y and then multiply it by square root of 10xy. And then in the denominator, we still have a 5y. Okay? Now, this is completely factored. Yes, there are fives in the numerator and denominator. Uh, there's a five here. There's a five trapped under the radical, and it is trapped under the radical as a factor of 10. And there's a five down here. But none of them are free. None of the ones on top are just a five multiplied by everything else. If that were the case, you could cancel here. You do not cancel. Okay, there is a convention that we use, though. We try to keep the radicals out of fractions altogether. And you can accomplish that with this case if you rewrite it this way. Either of these is fine. This is the one that is preferred by your book, by Pearson. Once again, that's just trying to express the radical out, outside of any fractions, if at all possible. Okay, and this is the end of video A for section 11.4. Please make sure you take a look at video B after this before we meet for class tomorrow morning.